What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Talking Elite Fitness. I'm Sean Woodland, being joined by Tommy Marquez. Tommy, what's up? Mm -hmm. Falls in full swing, but it's actually nice and toasty here, about mid nineties. So it's take that, Lauren. Right now. It's still fun. <laughs> it's like summer is awaiting fall, and proudly featuring Lauren Khalil. Lauren, uh, it's you look actually it's fall, fall here. Yeah, no, it's summer right now. So we're nope, like the headless it is horse. Fall. We have the a headless heated... horseman's about to pop out of her background right now. She's I got know. like pumpkins and. <laughs> And right here on the television all afternoon playing in the background has been Harry Potter. I'm going through all of the wow. episodes because this is the season. Okay. Nice. I thought Harry Potter was more of a holiday thing. It is. We're in October. It's the holiday season, no, Sean. Okay. No, Should we have, this debate? <laughs> yes, we have uh, this debate? Because it's not the holiday season. That's oh, Sean, did, we did. Remember we did the fall things draft with Danny Spiegel yes. back in the day? She, oh, uh, that's one she of the, Harry Potter. She, she, she took the Harry Potter marathon. Right, who am I to question the the Harry so Potter knowledge one. of one Danny Spiegel? Mm -hmm. All right, fine. Mm -hmm. But we're not in the holidays. Okay, today we're going to talk about what's going on with the Dubai Fitness Championship. I uh, got some news about the Rogue Invitational. And Tommy and Lauren did an interview with Mitch Bragg from the PFAA uh, in SoCal. He had some cool things to talk about as far as you know the structure of the PFAA, some of the things that they're working on that maybe that you're not hearing about, What what's going on uh, with it other than the very public facing stuff that they're, that they're doing right now. And just some other good information to have about that organization. So we will play that later on uh, in the show, but first we want to thank our sponsor for today. And that is Thirdsy, the recovery collagen drink that you take right before bed. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it has plenty of great ingredients. It is melatonin free. So it's not habit for habit forming. It has GABA magnesium, Althanine, it helps calm your central nervous system and make sure that when you go to sleep, that you A, get to sleep more quickly, B, sleep more soundly, and C, feel great when you wake up. You take it right, you know, not right before, maybe like an hour before you go to bed, kind of when you're in your winding down routine. When do you take it? I'm going to be honest, guys. I took it like five minutes before we started this podcast. Oh, so we better hurry up because you're going to be like, OWTS, <laughs> we're recording at night. <laughs> is it, yeah. is it ticky? Look. Yeah, that was so a ticking we, time bomb. We gotta, we gotta speed this thing up here. You, yeah, if you're this, be able I to had to get it in. I didn't want to wait till we were done. Uh, that's, that's smart. Like that's that's actually really smart. So as if you're uh, if you are watching this, you will kind of like see the effects of thirdsy throughout the show. <laughs> if I doze off, I apologize in advance as we it's move through this. But you can scan the QR code on your screen, or you can go to thirdsy.com, use our code TEF, and you will save twenty percent. I cannot stress how good this stuff is and how vital it is to my survival right now. Uh, I still don't get enough sleep, but the sleep I do get is you know much of much better quality. Thanks to Thirdsy. So check them out. Thirdsy.com. Use the code TEF. Okay. First bit of news we want to get into. Let's talk about uh, the Dubai Fitness Championship the qualifiers going on right now. There is a leaderboard up. You can link to it from uh, their link tree on Instagram, the Dubai Fitness Championship Instagram. The last day to submit scores is October 10th. So that is quickly approaching. And uh, there are still some, if you go to leaderboard, still some, there's some names that you might recognize on there, but a lot of big names are, have uh, not yet submitted scores as is customary with something like this, where they wait till the end of the day, like the right, right up against it. And then you, everyone hits send. So mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing how that plays out because that is always one of the you know, major off season competitions. No doubt. Has anyone announced for sure that they're going? Like, do we know if for sure who's attending yet? Because they do get, they do allow people to, to come in via you know, other means in the qualifier. I haven't seen uh, anything yet. Yeah, I don't know, Lauren. Yeah, I, I've, I I've heard some stuff behind the scenes, but nothing official. Yeah, I haven't heard any official announcements. I think maybe it was on our Friday Q and A. I've been seeing that Luca has been posting mm -hmm. some of the qualifier videos and then tagging Dubai fitness, uh, championship. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if you scroll down to the bottom of the leaderboard, it has Roman Krennikov, Alex yeah. Katulis, uh, uh, Callum Clements. So, so some familiar names on there, but again, no yeah, Yor yet. Yorgos Karavis, a lot of like European, uh, athletes that pretty frequent that, that competition especially like, you know, like Jorgis and Alex have been there pretty much every year. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you, you know, Luca pr has done it 
most years. And yeah, there's a pretty, pretty distinct, uh, not just European, but there's also some, uh, some like Oceania Pacific Mm -hmm. athletes too. I think the Fowler Mm -hmm. brothers are, uh, signed up for Jake Douglas, Jake Douglas. Uh, yeah. Um, Zane Healy. There's a few others. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but yeah, you usually that's like a, a, a much more reasonable fly. Oh, Keelan Henry, mm-hmm. um, Con, Con Porter signed up for it. Yeah, it's a decent amount. Tommy, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Dubai Fitness Championship kind of where Lazar Jukic first sort of showed up on the scene or started to make a little bit of a name for himself? Yeah, no doubt. Um, I, I think it was tw- the 2019 Dubai uh, Fitness Championships, which was technically the twenty for the 2020 season. Um, he finished fifth at that competition, and that was back when you know, uh, the, the early, there was kind of like this mad dash to get to some of the early sanctional events, mm-hmm. Dubai, Wadapalooza, um, filthy one fifty, And that, that was one of the ones where like, you know, the programming is, is going to be pretty extensive. You're going to do a lot of volume. Um, you're probably going to do some nasty tests that involve some heavy, heavy lifting. You're going to get to swim. Um, and you're going to get to have like a pretty, I don't want to say necessarily well-rounded because, you know, they did some fun stuff that maybe fit outside of the, the norm, but you got, a, you got to touch on a lot of different um, programming pieces that maybe some of the other more condensed sanctionals that existed at the time weren't necessarily a part of. And um, yeah, that, that 2021 was, was definitely a fun one. Cause I remember specifically uh, that year, Brent and Pat both went to Dubai and they went there to try mm-hmm. and get an early, uh, ticket just in case, as well as like, it was, it was one of the best paychecks out there. Yeah. And I remember mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, Lazar John with him a little bit about sw- the very first swim event. Cause he's just like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to you here. I, I, like I'm, I'm the best swimmer in the field and I'm going to show it. Um, and I, I remember that standing out specifically on the first day as we were, you know, out there on the, uh, on the beach, but that was definitely one of the ones that he also decided to go back to frequently as uh, it, this is always on his calendar, a good competition. He was close with the organizers and uh, a good competitive off-season opportunity for him as someone that was really trying to stamp his name in the sport. Well, speaking of events that used to be sanctioned events and are very prestigious, the Rogue Invitational is quickly approaching as well. That is uh, November, I want to say 8th. It's, the week, it's that weekend. All I know is that I leave on election night, so that should be fun. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> so, uh, yeah that'll be a get yourself one. a slice of the newsroom yeah. pizza <laughs> yeah, big, oh god the newsroom pizza remember that hey you're all working 14 hours but you know what we did here's your pizza we got pizza everybody all right and then it those like people, a bribe. people on the field sorry i'm going off on a tangent now people who are like out in the field of the different election offices they didn't get jack squat you'd have to come back and no. get whatever the cold leftovers were at cold midnight or whatever you got oh yeah TV so election bad. pizza night. Wow. Um, pizza. Yeah, that oh, was a big every one. single news station uh-huh. in the US has pizza on election night. This is night. if you're in a thing. news department, like this so being in the Sorry. sports, our big nights were like Friday nights for high school football and then like any huge sporting event. So Sunday, yeah. really anytime the Jaguars play, like we were grinding. The news department, they have at least where I was in Florida, they got two things. All right. They got election <laughs> night, that's their Super Bowl. It's all hands on deck. This is the greatest thing ever and hurricane coverage that's it right oh, so yeah, yeah 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 okay <laughs> sorry anyway rogue invitation we have uh more information about who's going to be participating and as it usually is it is a you know, who's who of the sports best i mean tia toomey is going to be there that got announced jeff adler is going to be there laura horvath is going to be there pat velner gabby mcgawa justin Medeiros, roman krenikoff gumanson daniel brandon jason hopper ariel lowen but as you go through, you know, these, these athletes who are here, Noah Olson is going to be competing. Alex Gazan, Dallin Pepper, Brooke Wells, Jay Crouch, Amanda Barnhart, Chandler Smith, Emma McQuaid, Brent Fakowski, Emily Rolfe. I mean, the list goes on and on of these just, you know, as Pat Sherwood used to say, just absolute pipe hitters. Mm-hmm. And so the question that I have now is that I think in the past, the rogue, oh, Haley Adams is going to be there too. And uh, Sam Quant. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of good athletes are going to be on display here. And that's just in the CrossFit competition. Strongman competition is going to have some really good athletes as well. But focusing on the, the CrossFit competition, 
since the Rogue Invitational's inception, I think it is kind of occupied as far as how winners are regarded. It goes games and then Rogue Invitational is probably second, just based yeah. on the talent that's at that field. But I think this year that might be reversed. Yeah. Lauren, you can jump in first if you want. Yeah. And again, I don't want to take anything away from James and Tia at the games and right. earning their performances and, and everything that they did at the games. But just when you look at the field, I mean, we didn't see Jeff Adler. We didn't see Laura Horvath. Two of last year's games champions are now going to be in this field. I just feel like this is going to give us a better idea of what the caliber of athletes really look like at their competitive best. Mm -hmm. well, and I say yeah, that with, I don't without taking anything away from from the games. Yeah, yeah, different. Yeah. But yeah, I you don't want to take any anything away from the results, right? Like congratulations to all the athletes that crushed it, that podium, that won. Not taking anything away from there, but if you take if you take a step back and you just look at all right, what were the details of what happened? You you now like we know that the athletes stepping onto the floor at Rogue are like emotionally, spiritually going to be relatively whole, right? Which they mm -hmm. weren't in Fort Worth. You had a lot of athletes competing under, you know, a lot of different uh, circumstances, both, you know, <laughs> what, based on their relationship to Lazar, based on the relationship to the sport. And it, it's safe to say they just, a lot of them didn't have the same competitive mm -hmm. fire. You couple that with, you're actually going to have the defending champions from last year competing and finishing the weekend. Um, and, and normally the knock I would say would be that the comparison to rogue that doesn't hold as much water is the programming aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Because rogue will take more creative liberties to do some cool stuff, some spectacle type events. And they're not necessarily, they're not concerned with crowding the fittest. So they don't, they're not beholden to the like programming board that would normally go associated with that. But I say like to that this year, I think it, that's not as valid because the games itself didn't do their full programming board. Mm -hmm. You know, they cut out an entire day of competition. They took, they cut out the majority of, yeah, they cut out a good portion of two days of competition, you know, and, and abbreviated stuff and changed things. So I, I think this kind of becomes the de facto, um, I don't know, marquee event that everyone could kind of hang their hat on, right? In terms of full field, uh, full weekend of programming, everyone with like clear eyes and full hearts going out into the competition floor and, I, I think that's this is the year it'll be more valid than it, than others. But um, yeah, it, it's it's tough, right? Because like you don't want to take away from like what James did, you know, what Emily did. Some athletes that like mm -hmm. like made some, you know, created some like lifetime accomplishments and things that they've been chasing for a while. So it, it, at the same time, like two things can be true. You can you can say that yeah, there might be a little bit different uh, street cred with Rogue, mm -hmm. if you will. And, and I think the athletes and the people behind the scenes will be saying these exact things like, hey, this is maybe really the the real one. But mm -hmm. it's it's also hard to know how where athletes are in terms of like their, um, their peaking for their like training, right? Because usually Rogue, and even we talked, talked to some athletes at Wadapalooza a couple of weekends ago, it sits at a weird cross section for athletes. Are you cycling back up in terms of your training to maybe hit rogue full speed and mm -hmm. then take a long off season. Did you ever really take a full break from the games? And maybe you're thinking about going out to Dubai or, or fit fest or any one of these other competitions. And it's hard to say. And, and that's another one at the games, you know, everyone's coming in with their entire season centered around that day. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to replicate other places. Yeah. But I think given what, and I agree with everything you said, by the way, given what took place at the games, that you know, yes, people were coming in with their fully armed and operational battle stations, but their their spirit was not there, understandably so. And again, I'm not taking anything away from James and Tia. They went out, they performed, they won. But Laura wasn't there. You know, Adler wasn't there. A lot of guys, when you talk to them afterwards. We're saying, I think it was either Velner or Fakowski who said this. I've never been so disinterested in the competition and the results in my life. You know, that's going to affect the performance. And I, I agree with you. I think now they're going to be, I think this is going to be a bit cathartic for them when they, when they get back. It's, you know, it, it's going to be in Scotland. 
they've never competed there before. It's going to be indoors at a new venue. It's, I think it's going to ha- you know, not have that cloud obviously hanging over it. And people can go and honor Lazar's memory and not feel bad about being out on the competition floor when they're doing it. If that makes sense. Because well, I mean, I there's, think, there's that I, conflict in the games. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that SoCal did that for the athletes that were yes. there in uh, for the tear cup in a lot of ways, just speaking to them and seeing them be able to cheer for each other and smile and even interacting with them and, and hearing that the love of CrossFit was coming back and they were able to see that they could find a way forward, maybe not with everything, but specifically with the competition that they were at. It was really good to see, to get that barrier of entry back from, Oh my God, this terrible thing happened at the games to, well, how do we move forward? Do I want to be back on the competition floor again? And I think at least with some of the athletes we spoke with in SoCal, they they felt that again, at least for these off-season competitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and a lot of them were excited to actually go to Scotland for the first time. You know, mm-hmm. it a lot of – it maybe doesn't get the same type of volume in terms of like uh, vacation – destination uh, <laughs> traffic as some of the other ones but it's anyone you talk to is like man i really have always wanted to go here and they have a reason to yeah. um beyond just like taking a a, a step out when they're on a european vacation but also i think it'll be very important too like typically your first touch point you know as an athlete for these weekends beyond getting there and like just trying to kind of get settled is you have the whole check-in process and I think Rogue in the past three years has been phenomenal in how they've taken care of athletes. It's been second to none. Like the athlete check-in process has felt unique. They've gotten cool gifts. It has been very, like, um, very well thought out and like meaningful. Oh my gosh. Well, did you, I think it was Katie Henniger who posted a story today and it had, it was like the, the The kilt tartan. It was like, it was the, the, uh, and I, I apologize if I'm using the wrong term, but it was the material and it was the plaid material that usually is traditionally made of kilts and it was like mm-hmm. just moving and i'm I yeah mean, because then mike help and he posted that and then he yeah. reposted him in a picture wearing a kilt <laughs> oh i've always wanted one i mean i, I have pretty deep scottish roots well now you're head. gonna get one well we'll see but uh you can't another, come home without one. Well, another thing that they do that rogue does which i think is absolutely fantastic is they have the legends there and they mm-hmm. do this sort of legends meet and greet for some of the fans that that pay for that and i mean over there in Scotland where they haven't had a chance to meet a lot of these people ever. I can't wait to see that dynamic. You're going to have these, you know, OGs of the sport hanging out with, with the fans. And then the other thing I can't wait to see is that I think, and I've said this before, the strong man, strong woman competition at the invitational has kind of taken a back seat in the United States to the CrossFit competition. I honestly think that might be reversed in Scotland, or at least it will be equal. And I, I, I think the crowd is going to be bananas the whole the whole weekend. I think just that the whole dynamic and atmosphere is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see it. Man, I now you got me going on a rabbit hole of like what I want to see them get <laughs> get as a gift. Like, I mean, obviously, like right? you want the kill, you want the kill, but like our our my high school's uh, my high school's mascot was a Scottish chieftain. And ah. We came out behind. We came out behind the full bagpipe. It's, and, and it's Scot- one thing Salinas is known for. It's a rich Scottish no, history. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like the yeah. Nice. Yeah. Precise. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, precisely. And yeah, Utah and its hockey, you know, hockey yeah. team. Um, but we came out behind the full band, you know, Scotland the Brave playing. Oh. Like, I would love to see them, like, every athlete just taking pictures with, like, you know, the, the kilt and, like, a Scottish Claymore sword. Like, one of those yeah. big old broad swords that the Chieftains carried. <laughs> Could you imagine the photos of like, I don't know. <laughs> I just want to see like Dallin Pepper with this gigantic broadsword oh, behind him. Yeah. <laughs> or Shillelagh. Uh, I guess that's that'd more be cool. Irish, I think. Give him some yeah. bagpipes and let him teach him, like, try to teach him how to play that. I think that'd be that awesome too. Because they had, oh, they got that the awesome content. with the cowboy boots and stuff. So get him out there and try to mm-hmm. teach him. Uh, looking forward to uh, the Rogue Invitation. <laughs>